So we are at the Greystone Knights of Columbus. There is a military show today. Um, we've been here many times. I usually find something pretty good in here too. So we're gonna hop on in and see what we can find. Hey, it's done. I actually was out at a show and I wanted to do some filming, but I was asked at the door not to film. So obviously I did not. I'm not going to sneak in somewhere and film. It's people that I've dealt with before at flea markets and things. So I don't really want to burn any bridges at all. Uh, so unfortunately, I didn't get anything filmed. Now I'm going to show you something I got in just a few moments here. Um, I literally yanked the money out of my pocket as quick as I could to pay it down for, for what I got here. Now, I went to a military uh, titled show. It was military collectibles all the way back to the Civil War and before. Um, they even had a sword from like uh, 1500s in there. Really interesting piece there. But uh, end of the day is that if you go to places like that, even though it just says it's military, probably about 80% or better of the time, there's vendors there that bring other things with them all the time. And at a military show, let's say, if you bring stuff that's not military, there's not going to be a lot of people trying to buy it. So what happens is they're really cheap. So if I go to, say, a stamp show or something, I'm going to be able to get other items there besides just stamps. Comic book show, you're going to find um, action figures, posters, clothing even sometimes at places like that. All sorts of different toys, of course. Um, a book sale or something like that. You'll find posters, paper items, many other things tied to it as well. Even furniture, bookshelves, and things like that. So when I'm looking and there's like a specialty show of some sorts, you got to look at the potential of other things being at that place besides just what it says on the, the title of the event whether it's, um, let's say, a gun and knife show or something like that. Most of the gun and knife shows, I've been able to get postcards, military buttons, buckles, uniform pieces, all sorts of things like that. So even if you're not interested in the main aspect of what it is, most of the time, the majority of the time, I can get some really good stuff really cheap because, again, it's not a specific sale for that. They're not advertising for the oddball extra stuff you're going to find there. Hence, the price is cheaper for most of those. they got to take what they can get if they want to get the money, especially right now. Any of the shows going around in my area, even if they're not related to, say, just generalized antiques, you're going to find those folks there, too. Now, we bought quite a few things there. I spent $100 on one specific lot, and I'm going to show it to you here. This was 100 bucks, and in fact, I think the, yeah, there's the little sticker there, right there. Now, right off the bat, this is what was showing on here, as well as what I'll show you in just a minute here. Knowing your your collectibles is a huge plus. Now, I was an Eagle Scout. I have one of these actually here that I was uh, awarded as well. So I knew instantly what this is. Now, if you don't know, most all of these are sterling as well. There's like an ounce or better of sterling alone in this, which is like 20 bucks or so right now and just scrap value. Last one of these that I sold, I got almost 75 bucks for it. It was just a random one like this. It wasn't one of the original ones. This one's actually got a maker's mark on the back, so it's a little better. 75 easy. Now, I paid 100 I even tried to get it down a little bit more. I offered him 80 Wouldn't budge on it at all. I did shell it out, though, at, at the end of the day, as quick as I could get it out once he said, that's it, 100 and he went into a few of the items in here. Now, again, I was a Boy Scout for quite some time. So I know most of these. And in fact, most of these are from the same district that I was actually in 15 or 20 years after this person was in it too. So now this is a vest, typical. I had one of these. Most of the people did. Um, medals are also on here too. This is for the Anthony Wayne Trail. It's a hike. I did the same hike. Never seen this one here, but uh, something like this could get me 50 bucks as well. So I got 100 bucks into everything. Right off the bat, there's a few patches on here that can get me a few bucks. And I think, yeah, here's here's a couple better ones. Now, this one you'll see OA up there on the top. Now, that is Order of the Arrow. Anything Order of the Arrow is usually pretty decent. Um, may not be worth a fortune, but they're going to sell. Even at, say, 10 15 bucks, they'll sell quickly. Um, and then most of these religious uh, tie-in patches, they're custom. They were made limited quantity so maybe a couple hundred at best. 
So most of these I can usually get 15, 20 bucks for too. There's some other better ones on here too. Overall, I mean for 100 bucks, I'm gonna have my money back, pretty much almost all of it just from this here. But on top of that, I've got the entire works for this person here. Now this here is an order of the arrow flap and this goes on the pocket. I'll show you where it goes in just a minute here because I actually have the whole uniform for that 100 bucks. Now some of these can sell for three, $4,000 plus, believe it or not. You'll look them up, you'll see yourself. Go to Terapeak, eBay, ended listings, and then look up Boy Scout Order of Arrow. And that's all you need to do, and you're gonna see some horrendously high values. I've sold individual patches for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Usually the best ones of any kind of patch, no matter what they go to, whether it's the US military, a Boy Scout, or anything, are felt or hand-painted leather ones. Now the leather ones are easy to reproduce and fake, so you gotta be careful, but the felt are not. The age almost always shows on a piece of felt like that on these. Um, bullion ones that have like actual steel bullion thread stitched into it, like military ones with felt go for even better. Now this one here, there are no solds up right now, not even on Terra Peak. You'd probably have to go to Worth Point or something else like that. But if you know where to look, there's a couple of Boy Scout sites that give you prices. They give you rarity levels in the whole works. There's probably a good five Boy Scout sites out there that give some very good relevant information for dating, um, trying to figure out which version you have. Uh, which model you have of a specific metal or patch. There's, in some cases, say five, six different versions of metals and patches. The earlier ones, obviously, would be version one and all the way on up. So some of those can go for some good money. This patch here is probably around 25 bucks. I have another one of these, too, so I've got many options to sell this. Now, let me just get this one out of the way here, too. Now, unfortunately, this Philmont uh, belt here is missing the buckle. I would have loved for it to have the Philmont belt buckle on it because that's worth, depending on the version, could be worth a few hundred dollars. Now, this has been worn. It's still in excellent condition. It's nice and soft. Philmont is like the national or even global international get-together for all of Boy Scouting. It doesn't happen all the time, so it's a big, huge, major event. Most of the stuff from it is highly collectible, to say the least. So I've actually had this exact same one I don't know how many times. This is probably one of the most common ones, and I usually get 30 or 40 bucks just for the leather without the buckle. You can snap them on and off. It snaps right off. You can put any kind of buckle you want on these, so don't be be scared off because there's no buckle thinking it's it's not usable somebody will buy this they'll just pretty much put a buckle on there and off they go people can find the buckles but in many cases you can't find the belts now I'll get uh, the shirt out of the way too now right off the bat this is a Philmont Scout Ranch patch now in high season fourth quarter or so for something like this I should easily get 40 to 50 bucks out of just this patch it's actually just slips on over a button so it's not stitched on or anything else like that now here's again the same order of the arrow and it's called a flap patch because it goes on the flap the flap of your pocket now one other thing too I would say is every time pretty much I run into Boy Scout items like this in the pocket is the cards, their award cards, and other things when they got their badges and things like that. If you have the Eagle Scout card or the box or anything else like that with the actual medal, it goes for a lot more. Uh, named goes for a little more, not a ton more, but either way. Now I can split this up into several different ways. I could take the a uh, single patch I have here, obviously, I'll sell separately. I could also sell the belt separately. I could take off the Eagle Scout Sterling Metal and sell that separately. I can then sell the vest separately. And then I've got the shirt, official Boy Scout pants, that I can sell the two of those together if I really wanted. I would just leave this patch on here. Um, it doesn't have much else on it other than the, the standard um, Troop Number 147, Toledo, Ohio. Um, you know, it does have this on here, which is the Order of the Arrow patch as well. Those go for a few bucks. So all told, I could just take this off and then sell the shirt and the pants and probably get 40 or 50 bucks possibly for it because of this and, and, and such forth and this little patch here. So, you know, I could split this up and sell it in quite a few different ways. I also have the required 21 merit badges. Now to get the Eagle Scout medal, to earn that ranking in Boy Scouts, you have to earn at least 21 merit badges. 
I think I had like 26 when I went to start uh, my project for my uh, Eagle Scout rank. Um, some of these, some just individual ones like these, can sell for a few hundred dollars. Originally, these were on a square piece of fabric. Um, so they would be either cut or stitched on the back of them. Sometimes you'd see them actually stitched on square. Girl Scouts were similar as well. So um, I always look for this stuff. Now, a sash like this, again, these are all official. They're all labeled. They all have... Uh, Boy Scout emblems on everything too. The sash itself could get me 50 bucks or better. This one has boating. Um, it has a few other things, plumbing, um, hunting it looks like here, maybe wildlife conservation. Now even these have various different versions of these badges too. So it depends on when it was made as to which version you have and which, uh, which one's worth the most. The older ones usually are worth the most. Now let me just show you one more thing. I think this one... Yeah, just as I said, the square patches, this is what you'll see on some of the patches. They'll be square instead of rounded ones. Um, it just depends on when uh, they were actually produced. So anyway, for 100 bucks on this here, I'm going to make quite a few bucks. I could literally probably put it up for 275 as a lot and sell it fairly quickly. The value, as I said, though, depends on the patches, the metals, the age of those as well. Felt, as I said before, is what you're really looking for. Knowing the type of fabric as well, the early cotton ones, uh, those go extremely well. You can tell. It's just like military uniforms. The fabric is much different from World War II. If you go back to World War I, it's extremely different than what you would feel today. So the first thing I ever do, if I can't tell by sight, is to literally feel the fabric of most of these sorts of things because that's usually a dead giveaway as to age. Hence, you can go ahead and price it based on the age, the version, the model number, and the whole works on it. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. premium beer since 1844. Pabst, a lot to look forward to.